Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to cover something I think is super important. So we all know that going into a tech job interview, the most important thing is kind of demonstrating that you are the right fit for that company that you're talking to, right? Wrong. The most important thing you're going to be doing is trying to disqualify them based on sort of these subtle things that you occasionally hear, see, um, that give away really terrible signs that this company is awful to work for. So that's the first point I want to make here. An interview is a two-way street. You're trying to disqualify them just in case they're psychos, just as much as they're trying to do the same thing to you. So yes, obviously you need to give signals that you're not crazy, that you're highly skilled, that you have experience with the stuff that they care about. But people can get so caught up in trying to impress them that they forget uh, to evaluate the company that's interviewing you. I used to do this too all the time. Uh, and now as I've gotten to like a later stage of my career, I realize that this is super important. One of the nice side effects that this has is that it's really hard to care deeply about uh, what somebody thinks of you when you're actually kind of judging them and trying to find faults with what they're saying. Um, again, don't be adversarial with this, but it does help with interview stress. Um, I used to get super stressed out uh, before interviews and just like using this as a kind of like frame, sort of a shift in my mindset, um, kind of changing the framing of the interaction to I'm trying to see if you guys are a good fit for me. By the way, I'm also really skilled and interested in what you're doing and blah, blah, blah. That's a great kind of place to come at this from and it will uh, really help with interview stress. So without further ado, here are the top 10 questions that I recommend uh, asking at some point in your interview to make sure that you don't end up with a company that is doing something boring, uh, has an environment that you hate, uh, has people that you really don't get along with, has a management style that you're allergic to, uh, or just is a place where you're going to be stressed out, bored, and unhappy. So the first five questions are for your future team members. There's going to be a second section, uh, which is for like management, so like team leads and above. Um, but these questions are for your team members, your coworkers. So the number one question I would ask is, what's the most interesting thing you've gotten to work on during your time at company X? Uh, what somebody says here will give you an idea of how much project time versus firefighting time there is, what the tech debt situation is like, what actual technologies they're using and what their general approach is to solving stuff. There's all kinds of good information in here. And just asking every person or group of people that you're talking to, just kind of ask, so what's the coolest stuff that you guys have done here? They'll pick the coolest thing to try to sound good. Um, so it's a, pretty good, it's a pretty good way to select for that. Number two, kind of zooming in even more specifically, what's the balance between firefighting and actual project work that you find yourself doing at this company uh, every week? Like what would you say on an, on an, in an average week, what the balance is percentage wise between firefighting and project work? The answers are pretty interesting usually. Three, what's the one thing that you wish you could change or improve about your work here? And then you can drill in based on wherever you sense weirdness, like, what would you change about management? Uh, or like, oh yeah, that's really common, don't worry about it. What would you change about the work environment? You know, is it a hellishly noisy open plan office where no one can get anything done? Um, do the IT people sit right next to the uh, sales team while they're making like loud ass sales calls using the same script every day? These are things that are good to know about. Um, and if you basically frame all this as like, oh, you know, every place has like things that are annoying, it's totally fine, just be honest, you know, if you say, everything's great here, that's what I'm not going to believe. Um, don't say that directly, but if that's kind of the attitude that you have while you're asking these, um, you're generally going to get some very useful responses. Number four, this is like, <laughs> this one's a doozy. <laughs> you start like this. So I know that, you know, every company has uh, some amount of technical debt. That's just the cost of doing business. You have to ship features first. You have to provide value to your customers and clients first. What's the tech debt situation like here? And then listen, listen for the answer. Open your mind and really hear it because in a horrifying technical debt mountain situation, um, 
people aren't just going to say, oh, it's a mountain of technical debt, it's horrendous, don't work here, because their manager's either sitting right there or they desperately need a teammate <laughs> to like fight through the suck with them. So they're not going to usually tell you outright. However, you will get hints, uh, basically, you know, listen for those hints. Like, yeah, we know we work with a lot of legacy stuff. It can be kind of a nightmare sometimes. You know, changing one part of a system usually results in like something exploding a half a mile down the road. Um, you know, listen, because this is an important one. Likewise, if they admit to having tech debt, which they should, um, ask them, you know, realistically, what are they doing about it, right? So these, this set of questions is, is still for your teammates, presuming that a manager isn't sitting right there. So, um, you know, get an idea, like what are you doing about tech debt? Does your manager give you one day a week to just work on tech debt stuff and leave other tickets alone? Do you have some, is there a strategy for dealing with it basically? That's the really important thing. And this is sort of a two part question. Um, it's really two questions, but I didn't want to make it 11 questions. The 11 questions you must ask in any interview. So 5A, I'm cheating here a little bit, but that's okay. 5A is, uh, what's the work from home policy here? And then just listen for, our managers really don't get work from home. We have to be like butts in seats uh, five days a week. It's a warning sign. Uh, if you hear things like, oh yeah, they're really flexible whenever I've got something, it's no problem for me to work from home. That's a good sign. And sort of 5B is what does the on-call rotation look like? Another really important one. How many people are on call? How often are you on call in the rotation? When you're on call, how often do things actually, like how often do pages come in that we actually have to respond to? How often are you woken up in the middle of the night? Um, you're gonna be doing this. Yes, they're gonna be paying you, but there's more important things than money and sanity and sleep are two of those things. Okay. This second section, these next five questions are for the managers. Generally, this will be like the, the manager of the team that you're dealing with, maybe the director of engineering, maybe the CTO, depending on who you're talking to during your interviews. And these will usually be the last few interviews after you've passed uh, several technical interviews or even a day of tech interviews. Um, when you find yourself sitting alone with these people at lunch, in a room, in a meeting room, this is the time to ask these questions. So number one is, what are the biggest technical challenges that you're dealing with here or like surmounting or working on here at company XYZ? It's a good question because it establishes that you are thinking about the business as a whole and not just a tiny little tech niche. So it makes you look good to begin with. That's, that's a good start. But more importantly, it shows you, um, it kind of gives away like, are there gonna be interesting problems to work on? How are they solving problems? Like, is there some amount of like technical leadership that really knows what they're doing? Is an interesting problem by their definition a really boring one by yours? All these things are important. This is also the, uh, the like, are they using really crappy technology alert? So listen. Number two, where do you see the team that you're gonna be joining? Um, where do you see that team in one to two years? If they have plans for the team, if they talk about mentorship, if they talk about educating that team, sending them to conferences, getting them to learn new skills, take on new projects, um, then that's a good sign. If they're talking about how annoying and expensive that team is and that they're just there to keep the lights on, that's a warning sign. Three, what is the most annoying aspect of working here? And you can kind of like make this a little more gentle by saying like, hey, you know, I know like tech people, we always think we have it hard, but I know that managers have it really hard. What are the most annoying things or like the things that you kind of find yourself fighting with the most at this company? Just like what are, what are the focuses that you keep having to come back to in terms of communication, in terms of like fighting for budget? Um, what are the challenges that you see? Now, I know every company has these, so it's like, it's not a strike against the company. I'm just really curious about what it is here and you know what it is for you specifically. I'm just curious about what your experience is like here. It's a professional way of, of asking something that's like very useful to know. If it's a stock bullshit answer, dig more. If they duck that question for some reason, that's a smell. If they answer honestly and actually talk about something interesting, then that's also a really valuable data point. Number five. How would you describe the company culture and how is it maintained? 
an important one. All this like work from home stuff, on call rotation, how the ops team is seen, um, what, how the kind of like culture inside of the company between teams is, um, that is super important to know because that creates the overarching like theme, feeling, and environment that you're going to be working in. If a company culture is not actively maintained, that's a smell. Like it will just be whatever you know the collection of people kind of like Lord of the Flies style comes up with. Sometimes that can be great. Other times, most of the time, it is not great. It does take active management of company culture to create a workplace that's freaking awesome. So ask about it. One of the things, another 5B, <laughs> one of the other things you can ask here is um, what does mentorship uh, inside of teams look like, specifically inside of the team that I might be going into? What, um, is there a formal like membership arrangement? Um, how do you handle siloing of information and like distributing information between team members? Um, those kinds of questions, like how information is exchanged between the team, also super useful. Okay, so the first five of those questions were for future teammates. The last five are very useful for management, um, specifically like team management, directors, and hire. Um, that should give you a lot of ammunition for your next interview. Uh, just before I end this video, I'm going to give you two bonus questions, so stay tuned for a second. Um, all that together should give you uh, not just enough ammunition to find a little bit more out about the company you're interviewing for, but it helps to kind of shift the conversation to them just evaluating you to kind of pushing back a little bit and getting them to start reacting to questions you have, things that you're bringing up, and it makes it obvious that you are evaluating them. It's much harder to judge someone when you're worried about what they think about you and you're trying to impress them. So shifting like the mood and the tone and the context of that conversation over a little bit to get them a little bit on, the, not on the defensive, don't be like on the offense with this, um, but just be professional, be very empathetic and calm and you know, be nice. Be like, every company has these horrendous fucking issues. Tell me about yours. Those are hard questions to ask and you have to be a little bit, um, you know, use your charisma to ask those questions so that you can get honest answers. Um, but yeah, I hope that's useful. If it is, like, share, subscribe. Um, I would be honored if you did all three. Definitely trying to get the word out now that we're hitting 50,000 subscribers and I want to put out as much useful stuff to you guys as possible. Okay, your last two bonus questions for those of you that have stuck around for this long. Uh, I'm in a uh, like Slack group with a bunch of people that I used to work with and just kind of like the tech crowd in Boston. So it's like a ton of senior um, DevOps people and sysadmins and uh, tech management in, in the area that I live in. Um, and they are an incredible resource for information and advice. They added a couple great questions uh, and two of them are, how many interviews do you do in a given year? That one's interesting. Uh, you know, does no one want to work there? Do people keep quitting? Asking those things is hard, but asking in this way is much easier. And the second one, you got to know when to use this one because <laughs> it's pretty direct. But um, do you feel that you're compensated correctly? Good to ask for team members if you're having like a one of those parts of the interview where you like go out for lunch with someone and it's just lunch but it's part of the interview. If you get a teammate and you feel like, okay, I feel like this guy's not full of shit or this girl's not full of shit, um, we have some rapport going, I think I can ask an honest question, this is a good one to just like come out with. Um, do you feel like you're compensated correctly here? And correctly is a great word, you know, not well, not high, not too low, not blah just correctly and just see what they say, see how they respond. Um, that's a pretty awesome one. So there you go. I hope those are helpful. Um, I think having this in your toolbox is a little bit counterintuitive, but it's super powerful overall. Um, it positions you in a way that makes you look more valuable, um, regardless of how you did on the technical part of the interview. Um, it gives you real information about the company that's much more useful than just like what you see on Glassdoor or whatever. Um, and it can, you risk honesty on the part of your interviewers here. So, um, you know, it can save you from a terrible gig that's going to make you just want to like jump out the window every day instead of go to work. 
Um, it can save you a lot of pain and time and lost money and, and lost happiness in your life. Likewise, it's a great way to get over um, or to kind of like counteract, kind of like through a hack, uh, the interview stress, right? Like that feeling of on the spot and being on the spot and having to impress somebody and all you can think about is how you're being judged. I used to deal with that too and then, you know, this is a nice way to counteract that um, in kind of a swift and clever way. So I hope that helps all of you. Thank you so much for your support. Thanks for sharing this. Thanks for liking and subscribing. See you guys in the next one. Peace.